Hi, my name is Robert Duvall. I just wanted to thank you for attending this presentation entitled How to Get the Most Out of Your First Time Cruise. When I went on my cruise for the very first time, we were a little bit nervous about making sure we were going to get the most out of it, making sure that we weren't going to overpay, and uh, making sure that, uh, that we had everything, everything in line and enjoying our cruise to the fullest. So to that end, I've created a presentation that uh, hopefully no one else who watches this presentation will have to go through the same things that I went through on my first cruise. The most important thing, the first most important thing, is to pack as though you won't see your luggage again. What do I mean by that? Particularly if you're leaving from a cold climate, you're going to be dressed in boots, in uh, heavy shirts, sweaters, coats. When you enter your cruise ship, you won't walk on with your luggage, exactly the same as if you went on a plane. There are, uh, your, lar your main bags are carried on for you, and you have a carry-on. In your carry-on, you're going to want to make sure that you have a change of shorts, light shirt, and sandals. Just in case your luggage doesn't get to you, the first night, and it doesn't always. It usually gets to you by the end of the night. But sometimes, uh, sometimes you'll get it earlier, sometimes you'll get it later. But you want to make sure that you're prepared for whatever you're going to need for the remainder of the day. If the cruise boards between noon and two, let's say, chances are you're not going to get on until three or four. You may not see your luggage until after dinner that night. So you're going to want to make sure that you have everything you need. Carry your important documents with you. Entering a cruise ship is very similar to entering a plane. You're going to want to have your documents with you. You're going to be checked as though secu security, as though it's a plane ride, a plane flight. You're going to want to make sure that you have anything with you that you might need to show a border guard. It's exactly the same. Finally, at the beginning, you want to make sure that you charge your shipboard account to your credit card. First of all, what is your shipboard account? Your shipboard account is how you're going to pay for almost everything on your cruise. You're going to pay for any tips, you're going to pay for any drinks that you buy, you're going to pay for even things that you purchase in the gift shop. That is all going to go on your shipboard account. Your shipboard account, in turn, gets charged to your credit card. Now, you don't have to do it that way. But charging it to your credit card will save you time. You will not have to wait in line at the purser's office at the end of your cruise, when these lines can take hours. It's just a lot easier that way. I've also given you a list of cruise, cruise lines in order from the most amenable for your first time cruise to the least. These cruises these cruise lines have different, have varying levels of fun, as I like to call, and it's an inverse relationship to the amount of money that you're going to have to pay. In other words, most fun, least money. Least fun, most money. And this is just purely based on fun. Also, as you get down to the bottom of the list, you have most, um, the most amenities, more, um, luxuries. For example, Holland America Cruise Line, they don't have paper towel in the washroom. They have linen towels in the washroom. Very elegant, but you're going to pay for that. If you're slightly older, you're going to want to, you, you may enjoy an amenity such as that. Royal Caribbean has the most to do, bar none. If you're young and you enjoy cruising, however, I will flip-flop that one a little bit. The Carnival Cruise Line is less expensive than Royal Caribbean and probably about the same to do. It's still just as much fun. I just think that Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines, their ships themselves, have far more amenities than the other two, than the, the rest of the list. Princess Cruises, although my personal favorite, um, has a little less to do than Carnival or Royal Caribbean, a little less expensive, than Hall in America or Celebrity Cruise Lines. Norwegian Cruise Line, as you imagine, sits right in the middle. Celebrity Cruises 
is an excellent cruise line. Again, if you're maybe perhaps a little older, you enjoy the finer things in life, you have a little extra money, Celebrity Cruises and Holland America Line are the way to go. I have determined the three most important things that you must do when you, when you go on a cruise for your first time. Some of these may sound a little odd to you at first. Get up in the dark. Number two, eat breakfast in the dining room. Number three, walk around the walking track. But if you'll bear with me for the next few minutes, I'll show you. I'll demonstrate exactly what I mean by these points. Sub question, isn't it three to five minutes? Thank you, camera lady Julia. Get up in the dark. How often do we get a chance to get up when it's dark and watch the sun rise and watch it get light? We don't get to see that very often. That's one of the things on a cruise that you can do. I always set my clock every day, every night you're going to receive the newsletter for that particular ship. And the newsletter is going to have sunrise time. I always, every morning when I'm on a cruise, I set my clock 20 minutes before that sunrise time. And I get up. I can't haul myself out of bed to get to, to go to work in the morning. But I can haul myself up at 5.20 so I can get up on deck and watch a sunrise. Something you just don't get to do. Eat breakfast in the dining room. Where else would you eat breakfast? Well, most people eat breakfast on the Lido deck. They get scrambled eggs, they get sausages, they get hash browns. I eat breakfast in the dining room. I get Eggs Benedict. Walk around the walking track. Most cruise ships now have walking tracks. It's different from the Lido deck. The Lido deck is where everything happens. That's where your, where your um, dine, uh, buffet is, that's where the games happen, that's where the free ice cream is. Around the middle, around the, usually around the promenade deck, is a walking track. It's about two to three kilometers all the way around the track. Of course, they measure it in miles. Probably about a mile and a half all the way around the track on most ships. Walking around this track and seeing nothing but horizon all the way around is a beautiful sight. Your onboard amenities, what is included and what is not included. All buffet meals and all dining room meals are included. Your room service is included. If you're in the middle of the night and you're hungry and you want a sandwich, you call room service 24 hours a day. They like to receive a tip, but it's not required. All of your entertainment is included. If you walk inside any of the main auditoria that they have and you, you watch a Broadway type performance, that's included. This is important because when I went on my first cruise, I didn't know what was included. I didn't know what I was going to get a bill for and what I wasn't. What's not included? Bottled water, strangely enough. We walked into our room the first time and we saw a bottle of water. Neat, I'm a little thirsty. I will open this bottle of water and drink it. Then we saw in the shipboard manual, water, bottled water is seven dollars. We were a little nervous about what else we were going to have to pay for. Not that we can't afford seven dollars for a bottle of water. All of your alcohol is not included. Reservations only dining room. Most ships have a dining room that is reservations only. This is twenty, thirty, sometimes forty dollars that you will have to pay. The meals are commensurately better than in the normal dining room and the service is commensurately better than in the normal dining room. And finally bingo, casino and other, for other forms of gambling are not included. When in doubt, if you 